Green Team Academy podcast, episode 50, quickly building an international climate action network with Daniel Bougier of Team 54 Project. Hey, are you ready to make a positive impact for the planet? If so, then you're in the right place. My name is Joan Gregerson, and I am an eco-nut. Thanks for joining me today, and don't forget to head over to the greenteamacademy.com website to pick up plenty of other resources to help you on your way. And with that, let's get started. Hey, Green Team, welcome back. It's so nice to be hanging out with you again today. And I'm so excited today because I have a, a, a brother from another mother <laughs> that is with me. And it is so fun because I'm going to be introducing you to Dr. Daniel Bouhie, which I'm you know, this is a Nigerian name, which I'm yeah, not well, able to pronounce. Very well. well. <laughs> okay. But uh, what's really cool is that, that Daniel and I just figured out that we spoke to each other two years ago when he was in Colorado for the same training that I did with Al Gore, the climate reality leadership training. Absolutely. And, and we, we then found each other as I was reaching out for, for people to, to speak and attend the summit. So I missed getting him into that. So I definitely wanted to bring you his story. Um, and so Daniel is the founder and CEO of an international um, not-for-profit group, a 501c3 that's registered in the U.S. and uh, does incredible work raising awareness about the impact of climate and the need to take action. He's working in over 169 nations and has... Um, multiple international awards uh, in, around the environment. And he, he's the inventor of an environmental app called RepClim, which we're going to be talking about. It's a reporting for climate action. Um, and, and he has a call to action to try and bring people together to support that so that it can go even bigger. So th I'm so excited to be talking with, with Daniel today. And with that, Daniel, I just want to say hello and ask you, how, how, did you, how did you come to being interested in this area of climate action? Yeah, thank you, Joanne. And thank you, viewers, for having me on board. Um, you know, it's always very fascinating when people ask you, how did you get involved? Now, getting involved is a bit complex. As a young boy in Nigeria, Africa, where I was born in Lagos, I have always felt the need for that there's something out there much bigger than myself. I could not understand why, you know, we were having constantly conflicts between um, headsmen in the northern part of my country and farmers in the southern part of my country. So I grew up knowing fully well that in the southern part of our country that is coastal, there are more vegetation. And in the northern part of the country, it's not arid, it's not desert, but there are sparse vegetation. But since 2007, we noticed influx of headsmen, not in hundreds, in thousands. We noticed transhuman migration. And headsmen in the northern part of my country, they move with their family because for 150 years, that's their lifestyle. So we don't have the closed ranching system. We have the open ranching system and everybody roams around. However, in the South, we have more permanent settlers. You know, they are more educated. They want to stay around. They want to have their good fancy buildings and things like that. But in the Northern uh, uh, space, majority of them are headsmen that move around with their cattle. So since 2017, there has been what we call an El Nino effect, a fluctuation or an abnormal temperature uh, pattern. This temperature pattern has caused complete death of all the little vegetation still left in the north. So it had now converted the northern vegetation stuff to deserts. 
So the cows can no longer, their livelihood now have been threatened. The cows can no longer leave. Uh, the headsmen are confused. What is going on? This is what our ancestors had handed over to us for 150 years. Why is it that the last 20 years we have nothing? We have to move down south and look for where um, uh, veg vegetations exist. It is that movement that now brought the conflict between headsmen and sedentary farmers. By sedentary, I mean farmers that just stay and wait. They have good vegetation the atmosphere, the troposphere, the ground there are fertile. Now, these farmers have never come in contact with a large quantum, like an exodus, millions and thousands of people moving all at the same time to their regions. So it brought conflict. Now, the weather pattern in the south now has changed. The rainy season or the quantum of water in the rainy season has reduced. People do not get the rainy season they need to get. So it means vegetation are not actually as it used to be you know, just 20, 30 years ago. So agricultural product crop yield had now reduced. So there's already stress on the land, even, with the veg even in the regions where vegetations were. You now have a exodus of people, both humans, both animals, both livestock, moving into a region already uh, uh, stressed out and not producing and yielding well, you know, that now brought chaos. The chaos now led with fight. So farmers started killing off the livelihoods, the, the cows that they see on the farm. Now these cows come, they ravish all our little crops with an existing problem of no crop stuff because of uh, fluctuations in the rain. We can't take this any longer. And then people started dying. Over 16,000 people between 2015 and 2017 have lost their lives because of the conflict between headsmen and uh, uh, sedentary farmers in the south. Then I started, I have always grown up with that. And then I started asking myself when I became much older and I'd finished school, I'd gone through the College of Medicine, I'd finished my act. Why are people dying senseless death? The international world will not see us as serious people if we kill people just because of cows. We need to find out what is happening. Then it dawned on me that climate change was the problem that the United Nations in 2017 had identified in the first time that uh, the Darfur, Darfur is another country in the northern part of Nigeria, just very close, we share border together. It's in Sudan. We now notice that Darfur is going through the first recognized climate change induced conflict. That the weather pattern has caused so much problems that um, the little vegetations there had dried off. Darfur and some northern part of our country share the same climate and it's a walking distance. The borders are close together. And that now led to influx of uh, people trying to survive. As they got into Nigeria, the weather followed them and the weird pattern followed them as they were moving down coast. So it meant that the Nigerians also now there who are already stressed out had to move. It is the movement as a result of um, the extreme temperature, uh, the inconsistent rainfall patterns, the uninhabitable region, the health implications of being exposed to dehydration, drought, prolonged pestilence that now led to the conflict that already now is being exacerbated because governments in the regions, in all these regions, are not very, they're not very transparent. Uh, corruption has uh, bedeviled all the systems. Um, access to health already is bad then climate change is bringing an increasing vector borne diseases or vector borne related diseases. It's only exacerbating the already existing few weak structure. This now led me to uh, find out what was happening. And then I got a bit confused about how I was working as a doctor. I noticed I was not really impacting on people. It was more about me getting paid, but life around was difficult. Healthcare was still poor. I just had to find out what can I do to better the lives of people so they don't need to also present in the hospitals with this. And everything tied down to climate change. So I needed to find out what was climate change. That led me to uh, visiting the US when I was given the opportunity by the Climate Reality Project. Um, I was selected as part of the participants to better understand the connection between climate change and critical areas of agriculture, health, security, and the economy. 
Wow. Okay. So that is a very moving story. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that you're talking about this because I think so many people, they're still stuck in this idea that, that climate change is sometime in the future. And your story shows that climate change is happening right now. I mean, it's, it's like across the U.S., we had just extreme climate disaster one after the other last year. Um, but I feel like some of those, they happen and then, you know, the people in those areas are going to be struggling for decades, but the news turns away. Um, but what you're talking about is this, this migration of, and the desertification of areas that's pushing people and, and causing this conflict. And so, so you, you came to the U.S. and yeah, just kind of following up on that story is there were, I don't know, was there about like a thousand of us there? Something well, like 1,200 and something. Okay. So there were, there were a lot of us there. But, um, you know, I've spent time in Ghana and in Niger and have a ton of friends from, um, from Africa. And so when I saw this guy with this red cap and wearing his traditional clothes, I definitely went over there and said, hey, where are you from? Because um, I'm, I'm always trying to find my my uh, Ghanaian brothers and my, my family that, that shows up there. Um, mm. Because when I was in Ghana, everybody took such good care of me. That's um, true. So, so anyhow, I, I reached out and we talked, at, you know, just said hello a couple times. And, and so it was just when we were talking, uh, getting ready for this, that I realized, oh my gosh, I remember you. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So, and, and I had a, you know, I had a similar, the, like the confusion because I, I came at it because I've been working in energy efficiency and sustainability mm -hmm. forever, basically, but mm -hmm. I, I still wasn't really a confident climate communicator. That's and, true. and as I, as I understood too, climate change is the issue of our times. And if we're not able to communicate about it, then, then we're limiting ourselves. So that was kind of the reason that, that I went. Um, so I include in one of my courses, I have climate conversations, just like teaching people how, how, do you, how do you have those conversations. And there is, just by the way, there is a, um, a website um, with the Climate Reality project that's called truth in 10 and anybody can download this slideshow and that's learn true. it and give it and so if, if you're wondering about it you don't you know going to those these um trainings is awesome but if you don't have time to do that there are definitely resources out there that you can start with okay so let's get back to the story so you trained as a medical doctor you saw that the conflicts um, this, it reminds me of some of the people in the U.S. who have been doctors who, who went into criminal justice reform, sure. where, you know, they're operating on people in the emergency room and they're backing up going, how did this happen? So that's what, what you did. So, so you're now the, um, you're the founder and the CEO of this, um, this nonprofit of the Team 54 Project. So tell us how you went from going to that training to really changing the course of your life. So I finished the training, networked with some people, and I discovered that social media, especially developing a good content, will be able to attract them. So I came up with the all-inclusive concept. The all-inclusive concept is where, as you are, just come as you are, with your talent, with your skill, we will be able to develop a content that suits your skill and address climate change. Of course, you know, climate change action is one of the sustainable development goals. It means it's one of the requirements that 193 countries have endorsed as the way in going forward if we must develop before 2030. Every country signed up to the Sustainable Development Goals. Goal 13, climate action or addressing climate change is part of that goal. So I felt it was important that the only way 
we can bring everybody on board and not leave everybody behind, including animals that cannot speak for themselves. Because climate change also impacts on animals. And the impact on animals also has effect on us. The impact on vectors carries diseases for us. So I was able to marry people's talent, people's skill, people's passion that they have on ground, whether they are formally educated or informally educated, all their skills and talents were fused into one. We have teams of people that develop content from there. I'll give you an example. I met one of our friends online who is a can spray artist. He, ha he knows nothing about climate change. He has only heard about it, but how it impacts on him in Switzerland, he doesn't know. So I told him that uh, he got to hear about the all-inclusive concept and wanted to know more curiosity. And as a 28-year-old man, I sat down with him with a team of people. He told me he does spray, spray can uh, thing. And I told him, do you know you can use artistry to capture people's mind and deliver communication messages without texting? He said, okay, what can you do? I said, I have a concept in my head. Since you do a spray can artist work, spray on a canvas for me. On the right side of your canvas is the globe of the earth in its splendor. On the same canvas on the left will be earth, but in dark, in darkness, with broken bottles, with birds and everything. And we will target the parallel world. He said, okay, he has the concept of what I'm doing. He will see what we do. Now, the special thing about him, he doesn't use brush. It is can spray. I made sure that he got uh, plant-based spraying inks not the normal conventional inks that leaves the residue. And then he did the painting. It was awesome. I'll send you the picture. The picture was excellent. Enough for people to ask him when he posted on social media, which is our weapon of getting young people on board. So he posted it and it received 650 likes in 24 hours. And he got a buyer, somebody volunteered to buy the product. He told the person is not for sale that he's going to donate it to his organization's uh, first year anniversary in Philippines. And that painting is hanging in the city of Kat Balogan to remind the people of the Philippines who sponsored our event, our first year anniversary in December 6 to December 9, that this world may look very fine and beautiful. But if we continue the way we are doing it, we'll build a parallel world here. He did not have any text message to it. Just looking at it and hearing him explain in a four minutes video shook the world. So this is how we've been able to convert um, a spray can artist who doesn't know English into an environmental activist in the land of Philippines. 90,000 people directly were blessed, have been impacted by our one year anniversary we had in the Philippines. The president of uh, the Philippines, uh, His Excellency Duterte, approved for Team 54 project to have an international conference in the Philippines. And that is the power of communication. Communication is not all about talking. It's about how you're able to create a purpose, the urgency to act, and how you're able to deliver it in, the, in a peculiar way, in such a way that it will not offend people's uh, sensibility offends people's religion, offends people's culture. And we discover that art is universal. Birds, everybody knows what birds are. You do not need to be a professor to know that the bird has fallen from the sky from a drawing. You do not need to be a professor to know that that looks like earth. All you need to know is that the world is changing and that there are many vehicles or platforms that people can deliver the message without inf influencing or without irritating people's mind. However, bringing them to the reality that we are losing our essence as humans, that being a human is identifying problems, relating with these problems, not staying there, rising to take action. Climate change is a problem that affects everyone, whether you like it or not. Okay, so why is it called Team 54 Project? Originally, when we started, we started to focus first on Africa because Africa, as you know, from the from the IPCC report of 2018, is the only continent that will be most affected, you know, about climate change. In the vulnerability index of climate change, it is the worst. 
So I felt that we should start out in 2017 to focus after my training in Colorado in March, early that year, that we should start out with Africa. So there are 54 African countries as at 2017. Now we have one extra joining us, Morocco, joined in July 2018. But at the time Team 54 project started, we were, there were only 54 countries. So I said, okay, rather than say it's an African thing, why not just pick a number? So there are 54 African countries and Africa is the most vulnerable. And I said, we need a team, right? It's a teamwork if we're going to solve the problem of climate change. You, you started with Africa, but now you said you're, you're actually working in 169 countries. Yes. So, so how did that happen? Oh, my goodness. That's, after about two months of setting up the name, Team 54 Project, online, we started as an online group. I now noticed that there were less Africans on board, but there were more people from Asia, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, again, who are also vulnerably affected by climate change, you know, but, but in different proportions, uh, in Bangladesh, it's more likely they are cyclone. We don't have cyclone in, in the western part of Africa, but we have drought, we have flooding. In uh, India, it was monsoon rain. So they had different things, but they were all focused, all were all affecting them uh, this property. And I now said, and I started hearing comments from our members now online, that had grown to about 600. Climate change is a global problem, uh, CEO Daniel. Why not we make it a global platform? And then we now transited or changed from Team 54 Project to Team 54 Project International. And within the space of 11 months, we grew from 25, we grew from 600 online people to 35,000 now active online people as at July 2018, we don't know how we are. And then we have physically 208,000 members and supporters on ground. So our online platform kickstarted a revolution that made us take innovative ways of taking, addressing climate change. How are you counting those 200,000 members that you grew to in just two years? As you do know that after the Climate Reality Project, many of us started connecting with one another. It's part of the 12 acts of leadership. There are ways that you can engage while you are done from the program. And part of those ways is liaising and working with other climate reality leaders, just like me and you are doing. Those are ways to get. Now, your friends get to hear this and say, okay, let me be part of it. So I also didn't stop there. I was also attending and making presentations. And after about three months from my climate reality, I'd already gotten a letter from Al Gore saying that I had clocked in a hundred presentation, which was outstanding. And those hundred presentation were new connections, new people. And every time I do this presentation, I invite them on the board. You have the choice to pick to join our blog. You have to answer some questions before you are even added. You have to also agree that you will comply with all our rules. And then you are added to the group. So every person I met, including you, at some point, we'll have friends that are already on our platforms that share our views. Some work for us. Some do that on voluntary basis. Others even donate to the projects that we have. When you say you're asking people those questions, is that in order to join your Facebook group? Yes, in order to join okay. the Facebook group and also in order to have better understanding of who we are. Let's talk now about uh, two different things. One is, give me an example of an action. So, you know, awesome. people get together, they mobilize online. And I know from my engineering background, I did always think that that an action was like a physical project. And I know now that actually talking to people and, and increasing their awareness that that's very important. But, but also, are there some projects that people are doing, whether it's planting trees or you know, changing laws? Or could you give me an example of one um, actual change that has happened to transform a community? So we have what we call the school base climate advocacy project. What it involves is helping kids between the preschool era and high school era understand about climate change. For every grade 
there are different contexts and contents we try to push in so that it's not too much for them. So, but one of the things that is exciting me that we do is in the school-based advocacy, we go online and get digital paintings of wonderful landscapes that are not painted. Then we give these kids, whether in Africa, whether in the US, we give them coloring materials and we tell them on your own, give us what you think the environment looks like. At the end of the day, we reward a kid that is close to you know, the natural, natural scenery. When anybody sees that painting, there's this, wow, you know, that's a good painting. And then we now use the opportunity to tell them, this is how the earth should be. But sadly, many of our earth uh, centers and communities are not like this. The trees are dying now. We do that also for bigger kids by giving them essays to write about, about what they think is going on in the world. So these are school-based educational uh, idea is an innovative way for us to target the young ones who need to start to understand quickly where their situation are. So, so you are saying that if you have somebody that is interested in doing something, you have some curriculum, some ideas that they can then just exactly. grab and put into place. Exactly. Okay. But one other thing that we do is we do it having the mindset that there are targeted people that we need to do. Another school-based activity we do is in sports. I know you will say, how does sports gather? In Africa, you do know that we have over 164 million people watching sports-related uh, things. It means that that's a vehicle where you can be able to get things. Four weeks ago, we organized a football match between climate action, team climate action against team climate change. It looked ridiculous. We gave an eight minutes or eight minute presentation on what each of all these stand for. And at the end of the day, Team Climate Action won. Then we came back to tell people why they need to take action. 260 people watched a football game for 45 minutes without saying they need to leave and stayed behind to listen to an eight minute presentation on why we need to plant trees. So these are wonderful ways. The pictures are there. There are wonderful ways people are doing. And now as I speak, we're already organizing 16 of those football-like presentation, climate change against that. Of course, the climate change action, we give them green t-shirts. Then the climate, uh, the climate action we get team, we give them green t-shirt. The climate change problem team, we give them red dirty clothes. And then everybody obviously likes to support the clean guy. And then, and then we did our own thing. But the point was this, that that was the only way we could gather 200 people, both young men and women, to love something they watch. At the same time, teach them that climate change is making things bad. And very soon, we will not have football pitches to play on because the grasses will never be green. We'll only be playing on sand. That affected them a lot because they knew that they want their games. They love this, their games. The games helps them. They enjoy what they get to it. They don't want to play football on sand. And it means if you don't want to, you have to start planting grasses, shrubs, trees. You have to ensure fully well that you elect people that can drive that. Okay, so you're doing a lot of very innovative communication. And I love that you, when you were you did your training through the Climate Reality Project, you learned the facts and the urgency. And so then you went on to, to take that next level and say, yeah, but how do we actually get this to people? Exactly. So, you, so using art and using sports. And so now, so, so then the next thing that you thought of is this app that's called Rep Climb, where Rep is reporting. So reporting climate action. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about that in the few minutes that we have left and what your call to action is that you, how you would like people to support it. Yeah, just in the couple of minutes that we have. Yes, thank you so much. And you are spot on that um, I just needed a vehicle where I can pass the message across because we have 7 billion people on earth that have different kinds of things they want that interest them. So we just need to find ways to get those things that interest them to bring the message across. And I discovered that we're in a digital era. What me and you are doing are digitalization. So I felt, why not look for a digital way to equally get people to become ecologically responsible and stewards? And I've been battling with the, the system of getting a platform that can 
get you as an individual using your your social mobile phone to be able to report what is happening pre or post either ecological disaster or non-ecological disaster what goes on and then i was looking for how will you be able to report that such that stakeholders will be able to know the interest what people in the region feel they need as with respect to environmental problem since we have a gps system shouldn't we be able to link you know people having the ability to use their phone to record in two three minutes you know what they think is very important to them that climate change is impacting on and then compartmentalize the, that uh, in a regional on a regional basis so that governments that go and download the app and want to know what is happening in mozambique what is happening in uh, kinshasa you know how many flooding how many communities have we covered can go on the app and see the recording because it's compartmentalized for each country and see the reporting that there's still flooding here we still need help there's still drought here we still need help so that government can better now have pre-adaptive uh, climate risk reduction strategy to help people adapt remember there are two solutions to solve climate change is it that you adapt and or you mitigate but we are advising that we use the combination of both because in Africa, many of us do not have the financial muscle now, you know, for renewable energy or for mitigation strategies. However, we know it's a long-term stuff. But in the meantime, there are things you can do. Stop burning bushes. Stop, uh, stop using pesticides and things like that. So Team 54 Project Climate Rep uh, app is an app that was launched in Sweden as a competition. So we didn't know that it will be this big. And then it won the prize as the most innovative app, you know, that can help people, um, people participate in their own way using social media, a digital platform, reporting what climate change is doing and relaying it back into a, 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 a site. So how we now evolved uh, to the rep client is now that the organization that organized the competition reached out to Google some weeks ago. And Google, as a company, are now interested in the idea and the concept. They have reached out to me that they've been notified by the organization that uh, pitched the idea, the organization that organized the event. But they need 100,000 people agreeing to it. So there's a link which I'll send to you so you can give to your um, your members. And this is also another way your members can also help uh, by agreeing to the concept or reading the, 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 how the app works, you will be helping over 24 million Africans, 8 million uh, Asians better be able to have the app free because we want the app to be free. Okay, so what you're saying is that you have developed this app that it's, it's a really valuable thing that, that is going to be a way that people can report what is actually going on in their area. And it's something that can guide the climate action, the response. It can help people understand the urgency, what the actual needs are in individual communities. And Google is interested in partnering to possibly make this available at no cost to millions of people in Africa, Asia, perhaps others. And so all that you need is you need 100,000 people to, to click on the link and confirm that, yes, this is a good idea. So that's a very simple climate action that all of us can take, and that's something that we can spread and suggest in the groups that we're part of in, in all of our networks. So, um, yeah, so we're definitely happy to support all the amazing work that, that you have been doing. Thank and you so much. Yeah, yeah. And so with that, I just want to... Thank you so much for joining us today, Daniel. And Thank you for having me. I, and I must commend your, your podcast. It has really helped a lot. And I'm happy that we have reconnected again. I actually saw the po podcast on someone's link. Mm. That's the power of digital stuff. And I said, I've, I've known this lady somewhere. And I reached out to you or again over the online platform. Thank you for having me. And uh, continue to do the great job. This is also the climate action. 
Exactly. Right. And so understanding that by communicating, by collaborating, we're all that much more powerful. And so remember everyone to go out and click that link that, that we're going to be, be providing here. And the reason is that the time for action is now because there is no planet B. Okay. Thanks so much. And thanks, Daniel. Bye. 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 <laughs> Well, that's it for another episode of the Green Team Academy podcast. Remember to check out all the resources to help you make a positive eco impact in your community at greenteamacademy.com. Thanks so much and see you right back here soon.